bragging and our class is all about raising your vibration because it's March 1st and that excites me that it's March. <laughs> so that was sort of my March themes for the, the I put out. A lot of them have to do with it being spring and March because I get really excited this time of year. I know the weather's still kind of wintry here, um, but I love that energy of like, yay, it's March, let's go. Spring is right around the corner, we're here. So we're, we'll do our practice to sort of bring our energy up. We'll definitely incorporate some shoulder opening with this, um, the spine and the shoulders and the hips and we'll just get the, the body open. Um, with our theme of kind of raising our vibration, um, we want to take it easy and listen to our bodies, right? So if you're having a morning like Patty with low, low energy, modify and take, especially at the beginning of our practice, take some of those quieter poses, the less strong options. And then if you're feeling it as the practice goes, begin to build. Um, the worst thing I think is when I'm fatigued and then I just try to start in Tadasana and stand up, oh my God, it's like dragging, 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 right? So I want you to listen to how you're feeling and work and build towards building up that energy. Now, if you're already energized and ready to go, great. Do do what you want to do, add on if you want to add on vinyasas. We won't be queuing those so much through class. All right, let us get started. We're going to uh, work on shifting our frequency today. So if you're in that low vibrational state, low energy, we're going to work on raising that up. And let's go to just a simple Sukhasana cross-legged position. I'm going to take a sip. And those of you joining late or if you have to leave early. I have been putting this on YouTube. Last week's recording, the mic didn't work, so I'm trying to, I'm hoping it works this week. I don't know what happened that all of a sudden the mic didn't pick up. So it was sort of not the best sound, not like when we do our lives. So hopefully that's corrected. And let's just start. Comfortable seat, relax the shoulders down, relax the face. And begin to just tune into your breath. Notice the quality of your breath right now. Softening your face and jaw. Relaxing the shoulders, lengthening the spine. And then notice, are you leaning way forward? Are you leaning way back? Can you center yourself and envision this little string pulling on the crown of your head, lengthening up towards the sky and relaxing your face down. Shoulders relax down. And this is where I'd like you to just pause and check in with yourself. Before we set our intention, ask yourself how you're doing today and notice where the energy is stuck. Notice where the breath flows easily and where it doesn't seem to flow so well. Are there parts of your body that like you can feel it sticking? I do this all the time, I breathe in and I let it flow down the body and notice how it feels and let it flow out. I breathe in and up and see how that feels. And then can you direct your breath there? Can you find a little bit of spaciousness as you continue to breathe? Notice the belly expansion, the, the ribs expand as you breathe in. And that little bit of softening in your belly as you exhale. And then if you'd like to set an intention Perhaps it's just that simple intention of raising your energy, raising your vibration. I invite you to do that now. Having this for your practice, having this to take with you throughout the rest of your day, your evening. Let's take a nice deep breath in to seal our intentions together, filling the belly, the ribs, and the upper chest. And exhale, let it go out the mouth. Blink the eyes open, relax the fingertips down to the ground, and let's just gentle switch of the cross of your legs just to kind of mix it up here. And we'll begin with really simple neck rolls. So starting gently, letting one ear come towards one shoulder, and then take it over to the other side. 
nice slow movement with your breath. And I'm sorry, you guys, my dog is barking. <laughs> she has this new thing. The last time I thought she had to go out and I ran off camera. I keep going with the slow neck rolls. And I ran up there and she had two toys at the top of the steps. <laughs> She was trying to trick me to come play with her, and that is probably what she's doing right now. So eventually she will stop, and I don't know if you can even hear her. It might be distant, but she might get a little louder. Let's take some full neck rolls if that feels okay on the neck. If it doesn't, stay with the half rolls. So going in one direction, and really just feeling into the neck today. We're gonna make this a little intuitive for your practice. So. You can go slower than me, faster than me. And then when your chin gets to your chest next time, pause. Notice how that feels. And then we'll take full circles in the other direction. And one more full circle. And we'll start to move a little bit more. Like I said, we're taking our time building into our movement today. Come back to center, wonderful. Bring your hands to your knees and we're just gonna take some nice big circles. So leaning forward and then leaning back. Sort of like you're stirring the pot and your, your torso is the spoon, right? <laughs> big circles. And if it's too much, if you have any areas that really are sore or painful, Dial it back a little. You'll notice, for me, I'm noticing it, especially today in the sides of my waist, my low back. You're probably feeling it a little in your outer hips, or maybe a lot. So just noticing where the soreness arises. And then seeing if you can find a little fluidity with your movement. Feel, as you continue to move, we're starting to build a little heat, right? So you might be going slower than me, that's fine. You might eventually start going a little faster, but. I notice right away, after a few times, all of a sudden I'm feeling a little less sticky, a little more mobile. The soreness starts to dissipate. And then let's come back, finish, let's do one more. And we'll come back to center and pause for a moment. Notice how that feels. And let's switch the cross of your legs once again. We're gonna take our circles in the other direction. So. Really, once again, finding fluidity in the movement. Finding areas that are sticky. And I love these little like pulses and movements because you can really, I find it a way to release. A lot of times we go into poses and we just hold and there's nothing wrong with that. But on the days where I'm feeling stuck or my energy is antsy, like I'm up in my head, I love to take little pulses like, straightening and bending the legs or depending on what pose I'm in, right? Or moving the arms a little. And that helps me to one, begin to settle. And two, it releases some of that stuck energy. All right, let's take one more big circle. Oh, so nice. Come back to center. And now we're gonna come into some variations on boat pose. So from our cross-legged position, move my stuff out here. We're gonna to begin to float the toes. If you're feeling like floating the toes is too much, just lift the heels. So sitting with a long spine, I'm gonna bring my hands under my knees to start for support. And then a little lean back, keeping that basically long spine, navel's engaged. So you wanna lengthen the spine and you probably can't see with my sweatshirt here. I'll take it off in a minute. Or you can begin to float toes or you can begin to float hands. So you can decide your level here. We're just gonna be here for another breath or so. And then as you exhale, switch the cross of your legs. Take a little fold forward, stretch your arms forward. And as you inhale, come on up, come to boat pose. Maybe you start floating the arms now. And as you exhale, switch the cross of your legs, fold forward, stretch the arms. Keep moving now with your breath, taking these versions of boat, whatever your boat is, switching the cross of your legs in between and then folding forward. Inhale up. And exhale, switch the cross of your legs. I do this a lot in my practices, and I did get this from Jason Crandall, if anyone follows him. But he's 
sometimes, you know, you do a, a pose. This is probably true of all yoga teachers, right? It's not like he invented this. Most of us do something in a class and we really like it and we just bring it in. <laughs> so keep going. And we'll do one more as long as you're even. If you're not even, do two more. And then come on back to center. Check in with, in with yourself. How are you feeling? The energy starting to lift. Wonderful. And now we're going to come to Varasana, Hero's Pose, or Thunderbolt Pose, actually, Vajrasana. If you would like to support yourself, I invite you to grab one, one block or two blocks. If sitting back on your heels like this is comfortable, we're going to come into it this way. We're going to take a Kriya here. That's just a quick flow, basically, quick movements, where we're going to do our Breath of Fire, opening through the chest as you inhale and rounding through the exhale. And inhale, open, and exhale, round. Now, you can go faster, and you can also invite in that quick breath. If you're pregnant or menstruating or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, please just stick with the normal inhale, exhale. If you feel like you wanna build a little heat, we're gonna inhale quickly, exhale quickly. Kind of doing a bellows breath, so inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So, so this cat cow movement. And we're going to be here for at least 30 seconds to a minute, all right? So you can take it as quick as you want. The faster you go and the more you use that breath work, you're going to really begin to feel it through the thoracic spine. So this is for you, Sarah, <laughs> to kind of get that mobility going, building heat and warmth there. And let the eyes close if that's comfortable. We're taking a soft, expansive gaze, either one. If the eyes are closed, bring your awareness to your third eye. Do another 10 seconds, really feeling that heat build. Five, four, three, two, one. Come to stillness, exhale completely. Deep inhale through the nose. Hold the breath at the top, engage your pelvic floor, navel pulls towards spine, chin comes back, engaging all three energy locks. Keep holding, holding, holding. And then if you can't hold it anymore, exhale, release the energy locks, release the breath. Blink the eyes open if they're closed. Check in, how are you feeling? All right, let's come to tabletop. So we're starting to build a little heat, starting to feel our vibration lifting. Let's just do a little bit of side to side. Let's sway the hips out. We're not gonna get as technical today. Sometimes I get really technical in our poses. We're gonna do more of a feel into the poses today. Now let's come back to center. Let's take puppy pose. If you have blocks and want to use blocks under your hands, that's going to get really nice and deep into the armpits. If you don't have blocks, walk the hands towards the corners of your mat. And then my block option looks like this. I go on the low level, okay? If you're super open, you might go higher. That might be a little intense for this morning. It is for me. So I'm going to stick with hands on the mat, lower the forehead down. Maybe even the chin can come down if you're a little more open. And let your head be supported. So this is where I love to have a block under my forehead. Hips are high. Elbows are lifted and arms are straight. I often see people lower the elbows. And it's not that that's wrong, but that's really not what we're trying to target with this stretch right now. So see if you can lift the elbows, and if it's not working for you, modify and vary your pose. We're lengthening the spine, hips are high. Keep opening through the chest. So good. Inhale, come on up. Come back to tabletop. Once again, sway the hips. Maybe it takes some circles this time. Ah, it feels nice. <laughs> And then switch directions. 
And we're gonna make our way into down dog as you're ready. So walking your hands about a palm print forward, spin the eyes of your elbows forward. So that rotation of the arms is external. And then tuck the toes, send the hips high, downward facing dog. And take time in your dog to lengthen your spine, just like when you were in puppy pose. So when you're in puppy, right, we're lengthening the spine, we're lengthening the arms, the rib cage. See if you can find that same length, bending the knees as much as you need to. And you might even wanna take a really deep bend in the knees, sending your sits bones high, and then straighten the legs or even pedaling out. The back of the calves are stiff like mine are right now. Take a moment here, just pedal out, making it kind of intuitive for stretching through the legs. And then come back to center, bend the knees, hips go high once again. Shoulders roll down the back. Stay for another breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna come forward to high plank. Now your option is always to lower down your knees, but I often see people come back to table Bring your pelvis forward, navel engaged. If you're back here, you're really not doing anything for your core, right? So we're trying to add a little core engagement or just hang out in your high plank. We've got a couple more breaths. Nice and strong. And then let's send hips high once again. Pedal it out, get the wiggles out. And let's come back to center. Bend the knees, lengthen the sits bones up to the sky. Open through the heart and the chest. And then come up onto the balls of your feet. Exhale, lower your heels towards the ground. Two more like that. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. See if you can maintain the length of your spine as you begin to straighten your legs. And then inhale, roll forward to high plank. Now lower down onto your forearms. Interlace hands if you like. Forearm plank. Several breaths in our forearm plank. So good, so strong. One more breath in and out. Lower the knees down, come to your belly. Let's come to Sphinx pose. Place the palms on the mat. Elbows just slightly in front of the shoulders. And then feel your hip points for a moment. The toes, I like to bring my toes wide personally. And then begin to draw your elbows towards your body. Lift your heart. Navel pulls back towards your spine, open through the chest. Three breaths in our sphinx, really opening the chest. Palms are pressing down and everything's pulling towards the body and the body's pulling towards the elbows. So got this sort of isometric action here without much movement. It's a lot harder that way, right? <laughs> but it's doing what it needs to do this way. One more breath in. So good, exhale, let's lower down, just relax the shoulders towards the ears. Now let's come into a shoulder stretch today. My favorite shoulder stretch. So you have choices here. You can bring, let's start with the left arm. You can bring it straight out to the side, straight out from your shoulder, okay? Or start there and then bend the elbow at about a 45 degree angle. You can go as deep as 90, just depending on how tight you are. If you need to make it a little wider than 45, go for it. So let's start with 45, see how it feels for you. You're on your belly, you're gonna press into your right hand and begin to roll over onto your left shoulder and left hip. And then those right toes might just kind of float up in the air. Now if you're in it, like I am, and I had a massage and my shoulder's really sore, I'm gonna come out and make that hand a little bit wider and then come back into it. If it's still too much, the arm can be straight, okay? It's, it's a little bit different muscle group, so just notice how it feels and make sure it's tolerable. We've got about five breaths here and notice my top leg's just bent, toes are just floating. They might come behind, but this side is not having it today. So be mindful, we don't wanna hurt anything. Let's take two more long, slow breaths. So good, gently roll out. Ooh, release that. Let's come up to Sphinx for a moment. Ooh, let the shoulders relax towards the ears. And some days this feels amazing, and some days you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so tight. All right, let's bring it to the other side. Right arm's are gonna start straight out from the shoulder, okay? Make sure it's not too high or too low. And then bend the right elbow, 
hand is at about a 45 degrees. Begin to press into your left hand, roll onto your right hip and right shoulder. If it's too much, come out back onto your belly and adjust your hand position. Top leg is bent and the toes float towards the space behind you. Maybe coming onto the ground, maybe not. And if you need more, you can bring that foot all the way down and come up onto your fingertips on the left hand. Let's do another breath. Wonderful, come back to your belly, come back to Sphinx, relax the shoulders towards your ears. Notice how you're feeling. Oh, so good, let's press into our hands, come back up to tabletop and then come up to kneeling. We'll take a little bit of a semi version of camel with a bind. If you happen to have a strap and want to use the strap, you can. Otherwise, just interlace hands and you can even grab your sweatshirt if you need that extra support between you. So like a sleeve of a sweatshirt works just fine, okay? Um, if you're taking the strap, I invite you to take it palms down and pull away, okay? If you're taking the interlace, we're just gonna interlace the hands, the fingers, and begin to roll the shoulders open and down wherever you're at, whether you have something there or you're interlacing hands. And then begin to lean back, engaging your core just a little bit. Lift your heart, lift your chest and chin slightly. And this is where that thoracic spine opening is coming in, right? So we don't want to bend from the low back, we're bending from the middle back. Keep lifting through the chest, another breath. Maybe the hands even kind of pull down a little and away from the body. So good. And then release that, come on up. Sit back on your heels or come to tabletop if that doesn't work for you and just pause for a moment. Soften your face. All right, let's come back to our knees once again. This time we're gonna interlace the opposite way. Or if you have your strap, you can try and then flip the palms the other way and see how that feels, all right? So two variations here. And then once again, setting up here, we're gonna roll the shoulders down and back. So kind of roll them back and then lower them down. Feel your core engage as you take a slight lean back and then begin to lift the heart, lift the gaze. Maybe the hands move away from the body, opening through the upper chest. Make sure the core is engaged or you're gonna feel it in your low back. It's not what we want today. Take another breath in. And as you release, exhale, let it go. Next inhale releases the bind. Come either to table or sit back on your heels. Pause, feel, notice. How's your energy? You starting to bring it up a little bit? So good. All right, let's make our way back to down dog. We are slowly building our way up to standing, right? <laughs> Taking our good old time to get there, but we're doing a lot of work along the way. In your dog, you might notice you feel a little bit more longer, more open through the spine. Now the hamstrings might still need a little bend in the knees, right? We might, might need to protect them. And then let's gaze forward, step, walk, or if you feel like hopping, we're gonna come up to our Uttanasana forward fold. Taking your time to get there. Relax the head down. Move your hair out of the way if you need to. Let's bend the knees. Nice deep bend, feel your weight shift maybe slightly forward into the toes. If you'd like, you can grab opposite elbows here and then really feel the weight of your head and your elbows as they pull you down, lengthening through the back of your legs. And I have a pretty deep bend in my knees, but I can still feel the lengthening. So, you know, if you wanna be straight and you're all the way up here, that's fine, but you're not gonna get the benefit of the weight of your upper body. So bending actually helps in this version. And then soften the face and jaw. So nice. Let's release the elbows, let's come up halfway, fingertips to shins, lengthen the crown of your head forward. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Last one like that, inhale, lift, 
exhale, fold all the way down. Place your fingertips to the ground and heel toe your feet out towards the edges of your mat. We're getting ready for a malasana or yogi squat, bending through the knees, sinking them all the way down. If you need some support, blocks under the seat, blanket under the heels is good, or take your bum to the wall and just use the wall to support you. But we're opening through the inner thighs here. So I like, I'm going to encourage you to try and get elbows inside the knees if you can. If you need to pop up the heels a little to lengthen your spine, that's fine. I just tend to take my legs super wide when I can't. <laughs> um, or I put a blanket under my heels. I keep lengthening the spine, pressing the palms together, saying good morning to your hips. Ooh, another breath. So good, relax the hands down, straighten the legs, parallel the feet, and just relax the head for a moment. <sighs> Enjoy the forward fold and the lengthening of your hamstrings. And then as you're ready, bend through the knees and slowly come on up. Come back to Tadasana, stepping your feet about, maybe hip width or a little narrower. Get strong in your legs, so take a moment in your Tadasana. I like to think about my toes as little suction cups. So feeling your toes on the ground, navel pulling in, relax the shoulders down. And take a few breaths here. And then as you inhale, feel your pelvic floor lift, hips points pulled together, navel to spine. Feel that energy move up through the spine. And as you exhale, release the breath, release the pelvic floor engagement and the core engagement. Let's take that two more times. Inhale up through the feet, lift the pelvic floor, navel to spine, lift the chest, relax the shoulders down, and exhale, release, let it go. One more time like that. Inhale from the feet up, quads engage, pelvic floor lifts, navel to spine, open through the chest, and exhale, release, let it go. Let's take a little half sun salutation just to move the energy a little bit. Inhale, let the arms float up. And exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Let's take that again. Inhale, rise, high mountain. Palms meet above. And exhale, hands to heart center. Lift the arms up, high mountain. And exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And from your Uttanasana, let's come all the way back up. Whew. All right. Let's move into a little bit of a balance pose. And I feel like I'm off camera, so I'm going to slide myself back here. Um, let's bring the right knee up. Balance on the left knee. Begin to lift this right knee up. If it's not happening for you today, do the best you can. Get near a wall. All right. Slide yourself over near the couch, whatever you need to do. Bring that outer hip in and core is engaged. And then we're gonna release the knee, hands to heart center. Plug your right hip back into the socket, extend the right leg out. Let's say good morning. <laughs> and you notice my right leg is like, hello, I can't stay up here. That's okay, take it as high as you can. Just another breath. So good, and then let's bend the knee. We're gonna swing it back to step into warrior one. Nice and slow, beautiful. And then adjust your legs if you need to. And let's take hands to hips. Square the hips to the top of your mat. Lean forward first. And then lift the chest. Maybe the arms lift up. Open through the spine. Left hip drawing back. You can even take that little lunge forward to protect your low back if you need to. Really feeling it into the left leg. And now let's all lunge forward. So coming into a bit of a power lunge, you can go as low as you'd like. Sometimes people are like way down here. That is not happening for me today. So I'm, I'm up pretty high today. It's all good. <laughs> as you inhale, begin to straighten your front leg. And then exhale, lunge it back in. Taking those little pulses. Inhale, straighten. Lift the heart. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lunge. Let's take one more. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lunge. Hold in the lunge. One more breath. 
So good. Straighten the legs, relax the arms down. Let's move into warrior two. Left leg is forward, right leg back. I'm going to spin to face you guys. And lunging into the left knee, tracking over your toes, heel to heel alignment or heel to arch. So you might need to adjust your feet a little. And then as you lean in, lift your left hip up. Press firmly into your right foot. Navel pulls in, relax the arms up. Shoulders move down the back. Gaze broadly towards the front. Nice expansive gaze. And let's take a couple breaths here with some pulses. So inhale, straighten, let the arms float up. And exhale, sink back in. Two more. Inhale, straighten. And exhale, lower. One more, inhale, straighten, exhale, lower. And let's make our way into side angle, left forearm to thigh, or it can come down to the ground to a block. I tend to take the inside of my right ankle just because I need something to hold on to. But if you want to stay supported, by all means do. And then let the right arm float straight up to the sky to start. Feel the stretch through the leg. We often just go into extended or eight and we kind of skip over this version. Gaze can be up if that's comfortable, or just stay nice neutral on the neck. Now let's begin to bring your right arm over your ear, extended side angle, one long line from fingertips to outer heel. Hmm. One more breath, so good. And then exhale, let the hands come to the inside of your left foot. Stretch the left and right fingertips towards the right corner of your mat. Are we hating this yet? <laughs> My left leg is shouting at me today. It's all good. And let's come back to center. Frame the left foot. Step back to dog. <sighs> Let it go. Notice how the mind begins to quiet. And if it's not quieted and you want to take some vinyasas, go for it. Take one right here. So good. Let's come to standing once again. Step forward, forward fold. And rise all the way up, high mountain. Exhale, hands to heart center. We'll take that same sequence on the other side. Rounding down through your right leg. Let's begin to lift the left knee up. Hug the left knee in, hands wrap around the left shin. Find your balance. Find something to look at in front of you. It's not moving. All right, so here's our challenge. We're gonna release the knee, hands to heart center. Plug the left hip in and extend the left leg out. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, hip flexors. Good evening, hip flexors. Whatever time of day it is for you. One more breath. So good. Let's slowly bend the knee and step the left foot back, setting up for warrior one. Beautiful. Taking your time, hands to hips, let's square the hips, pull the right hip back, lunge forward to start, and then lift the heart. Lift the arms up to the sky. Staying here for a couple breaths, and then we'll move into that variation with the power lunge and our pulses. Hmm. Just enjoying the opening through your chest. Maybe your gaze even comes up a little bit. You sink a little further into the right knee. So good. One more breath in. And then lunge forward, right hips drawing back strong through the leg. Inhale, straighten the front leg, come out of the lunge. Exhale, sink back in. We've got three more. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower. Last one with your breath. And then hold, breath or two here. One more breath in, exhale, you got this. Inhale, straighten the front leg, let the arms float down. Adjust the feet, and let's come into warrior two legs. Heel to heel alignment, bend into the right knee, tracking over the right toes. Let's start with hands on hips, pressing into both feet and then lift your right hip up. Feel that weight shift slightly to the back foot. Navel pulls in, arms extend out, and then relax, shoulders down, lean into the right knee. Making sure your right knee is not in front of your ankle. If it is, bring your foot a little forward, okay? 
expansive gaze, a couple breaths here and we'll take those pulses. So good, next breath in, let the palms float up, straighten the front leg and exhale, lower. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. One more like that, inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Stay for just a moment and then lower the right forearm to the thigh, the ground, all right? If you wanna come into full Parsvokanasana, I'm gonna stay on the thigh today. And then extend the left finger straight to start, really extending up through that top arm. Gaze can lift. And then a breath in our extended side angle, left bicep by left ear, long line from the back foot to your left fingertips. Let's take one more breath. So good, and then letting the fingertips come down to the inside of your right foot, walk your fingertips to the left corner, relax the head. It's almost like they're a version of humble warrior, but it's not quite. <laughs> so good. And now let's come to the midline, parallel the feet. So you're spinning to the long edge of your mat. Feet are parallel, fingertips under your shoulders. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lower down, crown towards the ground. Walk the hands back. And if you're somebody that like goes into tripod headstand and wants to just go there, now's your time. We've got a few breaths to play. If you're like, this is a little hard on me, bend the knees and relax, okay? And maybe the hands don't go all the way back between the feet, or maybe you want to take a variation here. I love to grab my ankles. So maybe you take that version. Let the weight come slightly forward into the balls of the feet, just a little bit. Sits bones go a little higher, lengthening the back of your legs. Hmm. If you're in headstand, please come on down. And then let's all come up halfway, fingertips under shoulders. Let the toes come out, heels in, and take a little bend side to side with the knees. Hands can stay right where they're at. If you have blocks, you can use your blocks under your hands. If you need to move the hands and want to walk them with you, you can, but we're just kind of releasing the inner thighs here. Feel pretty good on the hips. Great, let's come back to center. Bring the feet in, heel toe them in, and then slowly come on up. Relax the shoulders down. Let's take a sun salutation. Come down to our mats. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, come up halfway and lengthen. Exhale, fold, plant the palms. Let's make our way back to a high plank. You can skip the vinyasa and go straight to down dog. Oh, I totally missed one of our poses for our shoulders. All right, we're gonna go there now. So let's lower down to the knees, come down to the forearms, interlace the hands, tuck the inside pinky in. We're setting up for dolphin pose. So from our knees, we're gonna begin to lift, from our um, toes, tuck the toes, lift the knees, there we go. Begin to walk the feet in, shoulders move over elbows, not in front, gaze is back, and then press the forearms down firmly into the ground. A little bit of strengthening here. If it's too much, take a longer stride in your dolphin, okay? This is a lot easier on the shoulders if you step the feet back and kind of relax the head down versus bringing the shoulders over the uh, elbows. One more breath and then walk the feet back. There we go. Let's come to forearm plank for just a moment. Now lower the knees, release the hands. Come back, sit on your heels. If you'd like, take a child's pose here. Otherwise, just hang out for a couple breaths in your Vajrasana. So good. Let the eyes blink open. 
And then your option here for a hip opener is our final pose of class before meditation. So if you'd like, you may come into half pigeon, bringing your right knee forward, flexing through the right toes, sending the left toes back. If that doesn't work for you, I'm going to invite you to sit on your right hip and take this 90 degree angle with the front leg. All right, so from the hip and over, parallel to the top of the mat. And then you can just take a forward fold towards the midline of your shin, and that's your second option. If neither of those work, come to your back and take a reclined figure four, okay? So we've got a few breaths to hang out. Just getting a little deeper into our hips today. Oh, and I could have given another option. If you want to take double pigeon, sometimes that feels really nice, actually. I kind of like double pigeon better. <laughs> if you're in pigeon, you can lower all the way down. You can support your forehead with your hands or a block. And then let's slowly release that. Come on up to table, maybe take a down dog, pedal it out, release that. You can even lift that right leg and kind of give yourself some hip circles in both directions. Shake it out. And then we'll come into pigeon on the other side. I like to come in from dog just because I can swing my leg around, but you can come in from table. Or take your 90 degree position, take your recline figure four, your choice. And if you're ready to lower down in your pigeon, go for it. Letting the mind quiet. Noticing how you're feeling now. How's your energy? So good. Let's release that. So however you released it on the other side, do the same thing. You can always come to table and sway the hips too. Oh, I'm just a fan of, <laughs> of this. And let's all come back down to a seat. We're going to take... Pose on our back. Just, let's take a really simple supine twist to finish us out. And then we'll do our meditation. <laughs> a little rock side to side, squeezing the knees in might feel good. And then let both knees fall to the left, arms come out. Bringing them back to center, bring them to the right. Center, left. Center to the right. Bring them back to center. Squeeze the knees in one more time. Place your hands on your knees and then just take some circles with the knees together so the knees are moving in the same direction as each other. And then switch the direction of your circles. This is just a great way to massage the sacrum and low back. And if you feel like you need a happy baby or something else to close out your practice, by all means, go there. And for your meditation, as always, you have options. You can come to Shavasana, which is where I imagine most people go. But for some people, that's really uncomfortable. So when you're ready, come to your space for meditation today. And I know I usually recommend taking Shavasana for a few seconds, even if it's just to extend the legs and feel the body on the earth. And then after you take a few breaths, you can come to your seat and we'll begin our meditation. Feeling into your body I invite you to come back to your intention. What intention did you set for yourself, for your practice? 
And did that intention come to fruition? Or were you still feeling like, oh, my energy's still low, it didn't happen for me? And just noticing, being okay with whatever happened or didn't happen. I mean, just coming to the point of observer. And taking a few moments here to honor whatever is there for you. Once again, feeling the relaxation from your breath, just like we started. So feeling the breath as it flows in through the body, becoming the observer of your breath. What do you notice that has shifted for you? And perhaps you begin to realize that you've met your intention more than you thought. But being okay with what is. Stepping back from the emotional attachment and just observing what is. Part of this secret of raising your vibration, of raising your energy, is taking that time to kind of separate the mind chatter from what is. Separate the essence of you from your mind. For you are not your mind. You are not even your body. You are the seed of consciousness rooted deep within your heart center. Feeling the seed of consciousness right there in the center of your chest, deep, deep rooted within there. Breathing in and out of that space now. Becoming present with yourself and with the moment. I'd like you to invite in some compassion for yourself. Feeling that in your heart space. What does it feel like to have compassion? If you were talking to your best friend and she was maybe not in the greatest mood, you would have compassion for her or him or them. What does that feel like when you have compassion for yourself? And continuing to bring in these emotions through your heart center, inviting in gratitude. And taking a moment to recognize what you're grateful for. It could just be this moment in time. It could be having the time and space to sit on your yoga mat today or practicing with people from around the world. It could be all the amazing people in your life pets that you might have, the places you've traveled, your bed, a roof over your head, the delicious food you eat, just taking time to give thanks for all the wonderful things in your life. Now elevating your emotions one step higher. Think of what brings you joy. What is fun and joyful in your life? 
taking a moment to honor some of those things. Maybe it's simply as being outside in nature, spending time with community and friends, loved ones. And feeling that joy in your heart center. Now bringing in the emotion of love. What does love feel like for you in your heart space? Once again, maybe it's love of family, of pets. But bringing in that feeling for yourself. Telling yourself how much you love yourself, how wonderful you are. What an amazing human you are. That you are so worthy of all the things you envision in your life. There is no lack. Everything that you want, you can have. Feeling that emotion of love, of self-worth, allows you to raise your vibration to the level of bringing in and attracting all the wonderfulness in your life. Telling yourself, I am so worthy. I am so worthy of all the things, of love, of wealth, of wonderful relationships, of leading a beautiful life. You are so worthy. Now placing one hand over the heart, and perhaps the other hand on top. Just taking these next few moments, telling yourself how worthy you are, maybe even repeating it as a mantra, I am worthy, I am enough. I am worthy, I am enough. I am enough just as I am. And feeling your heart grow, feeling that emotion grow, and feeling your vibration raise. Begin to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness back into your body and the space around you. Making small movements, wiggling fingers and toes. Moving wrists and ankles. Perhaps even taking a full body stretch, especially if you're lying down or you can just stretch the arms if you're seated. And if you're lying down, bring the knees to the chest. Gently make your way onto one side. And let's all meet in a comfortable seat. We'll end our practice together with the sound of Om. You can listen or just chant along. Bringing hands to heart center, bowing chin to chest. Exhale the breath. Deep inhale through the nose. Sending yourself love and gratitude for showing up for you today. 
Sending that love and gratitude out to all these yogis practicing around the world together and sending your love and gratitude to all beings in this universe. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all beings be happy and live freely. Thank you so much for your practice today. Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining. I appreciate your presence. Um, hopefully you can join me next week. If you would like to donate, if you enjoyed your practice today, I would so much appreciate that. I'll slide up here and, and say my um, goodbyes and see everybody's comments, but I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Enjoy the weather, whatever it is for you. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining. I'm gonna, here, I'll send you my hearts. Thank you for all the hearts. I'll send them out to you. And I'm going to sign off, but I have a wonderful week. I'll be here next Friday at the same time. Hope you have a nice, fun, wonderful weekend. I hope your weather is good wherever you're at in the world. And I will see you guys next week. Namaste.